What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with part two on the Goose Guy RS7 build. So in this video, we're going to get as much done as we can. Try not to make the video super long. So go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. So now we are going to mount our servos. My torque servos ended up coming in in time. So I'm not going to be using the Align servos, but I'm going to be using Torque 2208 on Cyclic and 0704T on Tail. So I have my three Cyclics and my Tail servo. Now with these servos, it's very simple. We need to set 90 degrees. And if you look in the manual, I'm going to lay them out the same way. Your two Cyclic front Cyclic servos are going to face the exact same direction while your third servo, which is elevator, is gonna face opposite direction, and so is the rudder servo. So you need to get all your servos centered, and then for the ball itself, we need to go 18 millimeters from the center hole to the outside hole. So we need 18 millimeters on all four servos. We're just gonna take our servo horn, one and a half millimeter driver, and we're going to just thread the screw in from the backside, Get that the thread all the way in till it comes out the front side, and then we're gonna put our ball on it. So we're going to turn, turn until it stops, and you don't want to go overboard just till it stops, which is right there. And we're gonna come back, dab of Loctite on our screw. You don't need a lot of Loctite, you just need a little bit. Now we're just gonna put our dab of Loctite on here. Then we're gonna take our ball end. We'll get that started, then we'll come back, position differently so you have more grip two millimeter driver on the ball, and then we're just going to tighten that up, just like that, and you're gonna do all four of your servo horns the exact same way. Get all your servos centered, get your arms on, and then we will mount it in the helicopter. Once you get all your servos centered, this is what you will want, these cyclic, 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 and tail. So our two cyclics are the same way, our other cyclic and tail are the same way. So now let's get them tossed in the helicopter. A side note, Goose Sky includes servo washers with their kits now with the RS7. That is awesome. I wish more companies would start doing that. So now we're going to take the two cyclics that are opposing from each other. They are going to go right into our mount, splines up. Then we're going to come back, screw our servo washer, Loctite on our screw. You're going to get them all started. So get one started, get all your servo screws in. And then for the elevator servo back here, this one is going to go in just like this. So you're gonna drop it into the frame, get all your screws in, and then you're gonna flip it over. And the tail servo is going to go into here just like this. So you want the splines forward. You might have to kind of wiggle it to get it in there or move the horn, but that's gonna sit down into there. And you are going to put all of your screws with your servo washers, get them all Loctited down. And we have all of our cyclic servos as well as our tail servo. So again, we want our splines up, the two front servo horns to go in towards the frame. We want the back servo to go in towards the shaft as well, splines up. And then the tail servo, we want the splines towards the tail of the helicopter. So now we can get the skids put on this thing. It's starting to look like a helicopter. So now we're gonna move on to getting the skids ready to be mounted. So if you will notice that your skid pipes, the ends already come pre-glued, which is a very nice touch, so you don't have to glue the ends. But one thing you will want to do is the lock nuts are gonna go into the backside. They fit down into here just like that, but they can fall out very easily. So one thing I would recommend doing is taking your lock nuts, put them in the skid pipes, come back with a dab, of a medium CA and just put a slight dab on each corner. Let that soak into there and then do that for all four of your lock nuts and let that fully cure. And then we can put these on the helicopter. If you get a paper towel and quickly just wipe off any excess so that way it doesn't look terrible and then don't put as much as I did on your other three. So now you have all of your lock nuts just put in place with a dab of CA. You're gonna come back with a two millimeter driver and your set screw, and you are gonna just get them started. Just push light pressure, just get it started. You're gonna do the exact same onto this side, and these are very easy to get installed. So just push light pressure, and you don't want it to pierce all the way through yet. You just wanna get it in place. And I already did my front one. So now we are ready to put the pipes on. You will notice one side says goose guy, one side does not. 
the goose sky is going to go to the front to the left so we want both of ours together now we're going to take our pipes and they say goose sky on both sides we're just going to slide one through here and we're just going to fit it and then not tighten nothing down so slide this one get it all the way through it is a very tight fit get your second one slide it all the way through just like this then come back with your back one and get that one slid into place and then get your other side done so once you get your skid pipes kind of just slid into place to make it look like a set of skids don't tighten nothing up yet now what i like to do is i like to take the helicopter and we are going to set it down into place we're going off of these bottom holes and we're going to be running into our lock nuts so we're going to set it down kind of see what we got going on here See, that one lines up, but the back needs to get slid farther out. So I'm just going to put the front into place. Get me a three millimeter driver. Grab a screw here. I'm just going to get one screw started just to kind of hold everything together. And once I get this first screw started, then we can get the back one slid where we need it. Washer on the screw. Three millimeter driver no loctite because this is going into a lock nut get it started do the exact same on the other side and then we're going to slide this whole assembly back until the back holes line up so now that we got our back two screws in nothing is tightened down yet we're going to grab our ruler and we want 50 millimeters from the back of our skid to the tip of the skid pipe so we're going to take our ruler we're going to lay it right here and then we're going to look down right at the end of the pipe. We are at 50 millimeters. So you're going to do the same to both sides. Then you're going to line this front up here, making sure that both sides are the exact same. So this one needs to be adjusted, but we have this one about where I want it. So it looks good right there. We're going to come back with a two millimeter driver. And now is when we will tighten down these screws on each skid. So we're just going to run that down right there till it stops you don't want to go overboard because you will strip them out so if you tighten these too much here you'll actually end up stripping them right out of the skid itself right till it gets tight and then go a little bit past that that'll hold the pipe and then do the exact same to your other skid pipe and we can move on to building the tail so now we are going to assemble the tail so i have everything laid out here and i wanted to go over a couple things your tail pitch slider assembly is already pre-assembled. Everything is locked down. It's loctited, so you do not need to assemble this. There are lock nuts, so that is ready to go. So now we have our thrust bearings lined, out, lined up here. So we have our screws, and then the washer that's going to go on the screw. So it's going to go just like this. You're going to take your screw, slide the washer on, slide it on. And then we're going to have our small ID thrust bearing, large ID, shim. So we're gonna assemble it just like that. So we're gonna grab this. I like to assemble them on a driver, open end of the thrust bearing facing out, and then shim. So we got small ID, thrust bearing, open end of the thrust bearing facing the tip of our driver, large ID, shim. Then we're gonna take our blade grip and we're just going to Get that set down into there. I like to take the driver to wipe around and make sure any of the excess grease is out. And then we're gonna do the exact same on this one. So we're gonna grab our small ID, slide it down, our thrust bearing with the opened end out. So we wanna make sure opened end is out. It is important you install this to correct direction. Large ID, shim, our second tail grip. We're gonna slide it down into here. Give it a tap make sure it's sitting down nice and flush and now we can grab our tail shaft here and we're going to slide this in the tail o-rings are already pre-installed and they have a little bit of grease on them we'll put a little bit more so we're going to slide our tail shaft into place making sure we're not putting it into the grease on the table we're going to slide that down and then we are going to take just a little bit of our micro lube or included grease in the kit we're just gonna give a nice wipe on both sides, try to push some into the O-ring area. And then we're gonna come back with these shims here. And we want the flat side of the shim to go against the O-ring. And it's beveled on one end, if you can see that. We wanna slide that down, 
grab our next one and slide that one down. And now we are ready to slide the grips on. We're gonna take one blade grip and we are going to slide it into place. I put a little bit more micro lube onto the tail shaft. We're gonna carefully push this down, making sure we don't knock any of the thrust bearings out. We're gonna come back with a two and a half millimeter driver with our screw lock tight on, washer on. We're gonna get this one started. So we're just gonna spin it till it stops. We're not gonna worry about tightening it down. Then we're gonna flip our tail assembly over, grab our next tail grip. We're gonna slide it down carefully again, making sure we don't push the thrust bearings out like I just did there. We're gonna get a two and a half millimeter driver again, lock tight on our screw, washer, get it started. We're gonna run it all the way down till it stops, which is just right there. And then now we're gonna come back with our other two and a half, so one on each side, two and a half millimeter driver, and we are going to tighten that down, get it tight. Now we're gonna come back and we're going to check, make sure everything is smooth. As you build, make sure it's smooth and, cl and clear and feels good, no grittiness, tail feels great. So now we can come back with a one and a half millimeter driver and we need a two millimeter driver as well. We are going to slide through the outside and then we're gonna come back with a Little bit of Loctite on the threads here. You don't need a bunch. We're gonna come back with our ball end here, get it started, and then a two millimeter driver. We are going to tighten this one down, and then we're gonna do the exact same on the other grip. Tighten that down. Now we're gonna come back and do it on the other side. Come in from the outside, slide it into place, come back with our ball end, get it started by hand, Two millimeter driver, tighten it down. Now our tail is almost complete. We can come back, a little bit of micro lube, coat on the tail shaft. Now we're gonna come back with our pitch slider and we're gonna want to remember that the direction of the slider. So onto this grip here, we want the nut, lock nut facing the edge of the tail. So we're just gonna slide that up till it stops. And the same on this side here, we wanna make sure that the lock nut itself faces the edge of the grip. Push these into place. One, flip it over, two. Now let's check. Again, everything is smooth, no grittiness, no tight spots. So now we can set this assembly aside and start on the tail case. So the first thing on the tail now to assemble the case is our pitch slider. So we are going to take our pitch slider and we are gonna go with a two millimeter driver with our big screw here. And that is going to thread right into there, lock tight on our screw going in from the bottom. So you're looking at it just like this. You want the upper part of the bearing up, come in from the bottom, tighten that down. Then you're gonna come back with this brass sleeve and you're gonna slide that right down in there. Now be careful, it doesn't get glued on, it doesn't get nothing, it just sits there. So make sure you don't lose it. And we're gonna come back with another two millimeter driver. From the bottom again, we're gonna put our ball end on and we're gonna lock tight, of course, tighten it all the way down. So now our pitch slider arm is done, our bell crank. Now they do give you these two brass washers with your bell crank parts. I don't know what they're for, and I don't see them in the manual anywhere, so if you know what they are, please let me know. So now we are done with that. We are gonna set that aside, and we are gonna come back with the tail casing. So on the tail casing, again, it's gonna be two millimeter screws, two millimeter drivers on your screws. You're gonna lock tight both of your screws. Now that we have both of our screws locked tight and ready, we are gonna come back with the bell crank base, the bell crank arm, and we want it to sit angled forward so this would be the nose of the helicopter we want it to sit just inside the case just like that and we're going to push it right down into that hole we're going to come back through the side here two millimeter driver get that screw started we're going to come back with our second one lock tight on both screws already two millimeter driver get it started and then tighten both of these all the way down so now that is done and now we can grab the tail pulley belt and get the tail slid into the casing. So now we're gonna grab our tail shaft. We want the set screws to be on the right side when you're looking at the case. So this is going to slide down in there just like this. So we're gonna take our tail belt now 
and we are going to slide it through our casing here and we're going to take our tail belt pulley and we're going to slide that on the belt just like that and we are going to slide our pulley in between the two bearings here so it might be a little bit tight but you're going to want to work that pulley in there there we go it's a very snug fit and then we are going to come back now once we have this lined up we are going to take our tail shaft and again we want the set screws to go into these indents there is one on each side so that's what we're going to be lining up with so we're just going to kind of hold the pulley here position there we go and now we're going to look at this side here we're going to slide the pulley through until we see the indentations do you see them right yep just like that then we're going to come back two millimeter driver loctite already on our set screw we're going to get one started we are going to turn it all the way just before it tightens we want to feel it rock it side to side you can feel when you're in that flat spot now we're going to flip the tail over same thing on this side two millimeter driver loctite on your set screw get it started now we can run this one all the way down tighten it up and then come back to the top side tighten it all the way up wipe off any excess rubbing alcohol or any excess loctite with rubbing alcohol now that is in check and make sure it is smooth so now we are going to assemble this tensioner pulley system that they have here to help hold the belt down and stops it from slopping around i'm assuming so we have multiple different spacers and we have our bearings and we have a little tiny shim so the way this is going to probably be a little bit tricky to assemble especially where you guys can see it so we're going to start with our long screw loctite already on it so we're going to keep our belt in place we're going to slide the screw right till it's about to come out then we're going to take a bearing and we're going to slide a bearing in place now we're going to come back with our shim the little tiny shim in between the bearings give us a little bit more screw Come back with another bearing, slide that into place, making sure that our belt's there. Hold it. Don't let the screw come out too far. We might have to back the screw up a little bit. And we are going to want to take this shim, and we want to get it into position. There we go. Rocking it into position. And then start threading the screw in and tighten it down. Tighten it all the way up now that is done check and make sure the bearings are free which they are and that's what it should look like when you are finished now we are going to install the bell crank i went ahead and put a little bit of micro lube down inside of our pitch slider hole here that way it has just a little bit of grease for the br the bushing to sit inside of there so now the way this bell crank is going to work is a little bit different than what you might think so we're going to want to get that to slide into here first then we're going to want to get the bell crank right into here but what you will notice is we need those bushings that were in the wrong package that's where they go so we're gonna have to fight and get one of these bushings on this side just like that and then we're gonna have to try to get the other one in while we put it onto here so this is not going to be fun whatsoever so we're gonna hold that one there Try to fight this into place here. So you have to try to get both of these bushings, one into there, if you can see that. Then I'm gonna hold pressure while I try to get the other one into here somehow. See if I can drop it in. This is definitely not fun. See if I can carefully work it in here. There we go. I got it in. Now I got to try to slide both of these back together without losing it. There we go. All right. Now that we got that done, that is the hardest part of this whole build. You're going to take your screw. You're going to slide your washer. We're going to come in from the bottom here. And we're going to get this to line up the best that we can get it. Slide the screw all the way through. These, this arm here is not threaded. The mount. There we go. Now we're going to come back with our second washer. We are going to slide that down into there. We're going to come back with our lock nut. 
no Loctite or retaining compound. We're gonna get our lock nut started. 5.5 millimeter wrench. And you are going to tighten this all the way down. Once that is all tightened up, everything's looking good, check and make sure that everything is free and smooth. As you build any part of a tail or a head, as you go down, make sure it is all free and smooth. If you have any grittiness or tightness in it, you need to figure out where it's at and that'll not have problems later on. So now let's get this mounted to the boom. So now we're gonna grab our boom and here is the easiest way I have found to get your belt through the boom. I like to just fold the belt just like this, little piece of painter's tape and wrap the belt with tape. This will allow you to push it through very easily. Gonna crush the tip. Now we're gonna take our boom and we wanna start with the side with two holes on each side. And we're just gonna shove our belt all the way through and pull it out the other side. Once you get it, you can actually grab it with your hand and pull it through. Just like this. And now we want the Goose Guy sticker to face up. We're gonna push it right till these holes line up. Now, your screws are going to be two different sizes. Make sure, of course, that your tail assembly is facing the right side of the helicopter. So now you're going to have two short and two longer screws. The shorter screws are gonna go on the side without the tail fin. So you're gonna take this red little mount here, it's a shim, and it's curved to match the boom. We're gonna take our screw, lock tight, we're gonna slide it through, hold it into position, and just get one screw started. And we're just gonna snug it up, but not tighten it down yet. And we're gonna come back with our longer screw, and we're gonna take our tail fin, which already has the decal applied. Very nice of Goose Guy for that. So we want the flat side to match the back side of our tail fin here. We're gonna come back, lock tight on our screw, and we are going to go into the two holes right here, get this guy started just like that. And then you're gonna wanna line that up so that your holes match. Put your other longer screw on this side and your shorter screw on that side, lock tight, tighten everything down. Once you are done, it will look just like this. So now everything is tightened down and lock tighted. Now we can move on to sliding the push rod guides into place. So now for the tail push rod guide, you're just going to slide them over. So you can just pop them down slide them over we want the screw to face the same side as the tail fin so we're going to slide that one on and then if you don't want to push them over you can just actually slide them right into place and then we're going to come in on both of them with a one mil one and a half millimeter screw or driver and we're going to slide it into here and then we're going to put a lock nut into the back side here so just get that guy snugged up don't tighten it down because you still want to be able to move it and you're gonna to wanna to position these two clamps. So you want the first one to be positioned from the tip of the boom, which this is the side going into the helicopter. You want it at 295 millimeters from here to here. So you'll measure that out. And then the second one here, you're gonna want that one at 280 millimeters from your first clamp. Now it is time to mount the boom to the helicopter. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is pull the belt perfectly straight look down the tube make sure there's no twists in the belt so while you're pulling it you want it half you want to make a half twist anti-clockwise so you want to go backwards to clockwise so it'll be a, if you're pulling it looking at it be a twist to the left so anti-clockwise and when you do that you are now going to want to feed the belt through our boom blocks feed it through the first one feed it through the second one making sure you keep that half twist. You don't want it to twist more than a half a turn. You're gonna have to get your finger in there, get a wrench or something and push the belt through these idler pulleys here. To get it through those pulleys, you can reach forward, keeping that half twist, slide the boom into the clamps here, keeping that half twist, making sure there is no wires in your way which I have my tail servo wire in the way. That wire is free. So now I'm gonna continue pushing, making sure I only kept that half twist and it is going to go into this clamp that we installed in the beginning. And that's gonna slide right into that, push it all the way forward. 
Now our belt is gonna hang out the side. We already have our half twist anti-clockwise. So now we're gonna grab our main gear. And with our main gear, we want the red side and the screws to face up. We're gonna take our tail pulley and we're just going to drop it down into place. And we're gonna want the belt to feed onto the pulley, onto the tail pulley. And we wanna kind of just feed this whole thing in at one time. So you're gonna wanna work it as you're feeding it, keeping it all together, working it as you feed it, get that belt to come around here, just like that. Making sure you didn't push it too far through on the other side like I just did. There we go. Almost got it all perfect. There we go. All right, now we want to line it back up. And we want to get it into place here. Get that main gear on top of that shim that we have in there from earlier. So once we get it all pushed in together, we got that pulley in. Work it as we go. There we go. It's a little bit tight. But once you get it all worked into place, your main pulley and your main gear is in place. Now we're going to come back with our head, main shaft and the head. And we want this collar right here. So this collar here, we want the screw side to be towards us. So it's going to look just like this. Other than that, it's identical on both sides. On the main shaft, there is two flat spots right here and right on the other side. So those are gonna go off of these set screw holes. So we're just gonna slide these into place. Now we're gonna take our main shaft and we are going to drop the main shaft down into place here. So we're gonna push it through the first bearing, push it through the second bearing, and then we gotta get it through the tail pulley. So we'll have to just work it and kind of adjust and align. There we go, through the tail pulley. And then now we'll have to work it and now it's through the main pulley. So now we need to make sure it needs to come down a lot. So we need to keep working. There we go, it went all the way down. So now what we wanna do is to know that we are too far down or too far up, we need to look and see where that collar is. So let's pull the collar up, let's spin the head. Okay, we're too far pushed down. So now we need to push the shaft up a little bit check push it there we go okay so right there that flat spot if you can see it that flat spot is where this collar where we need to get that set screw so what i would recommend doing is let's get a set screw put in there and then we can push the shaft down farther all right we have a two millimeter driver loctite on our screw and we are going to just line that set screw up to that flat spot and there's going to be two one on each side and again when you get in there if you keep it loose you can feel when you get in that flat spot we're going to tighten that one down and now we're going to come back with our pinch bolt we're going to put the other set screw in keep that loose we don't want to tighten this stuff down just yet because we want to have because we want to have the play to allow us to get that main bolt in but we at least have it where it's not super tight, but it'll ride up and down in that little bit of, that we are allowed. So now we're gonna take our main Jesus bolt, which is a four millimeter driver, and we are going to rotate this over and we want to line those holes up right there, which actually we are pretty much right there. We're gonna tap the shaft down a little bit. We're gonna come in from the other side Loctite on our screw. We're going to slide it in. It's in a CNC piece, so you don't have to worry about a lock nut or anything. Loctite, four millimeter driver, slide it in from the other side. We just pushed it through. Now I'm going to come back and finish tightening this all the way down. I am using a four millimeter Allen wrench just because I don't have a four millimeter driver that big. Make sure you have Loctite on your screw. Once we get it all the way tightened up, we're going to torque it down. And then we can move back to our upper clamp and tighten that down. So now we can see that we need to adjust our clamp here. So before we torque those set screws down, we're gonna come back with a two and a half millimeter driver. We need Loctite on our screw here and we are going to get this pinch bolt put into place. So we're gonna come in from this side right here and we wanna clamp this all the way down before we Tighten the set screws up just so we have a good hold and a good strong bond on our clamp. 
but just again remember to loosen your set screws so that way this can slide up and down and we can get all the play out because this is going to adjust how much play is riding in between here like a shim used to do so now tighten your pinch bolt down now come back tighten your set screws down on each side now that is done we can take our anti-rotation bracket if you just put a little bit of up pressure pops right into the plate now our head is mounted make sure our belt is lined up on the pulley give it a couple rotations and now let's tension the boom now we're going to take our two longer screws 25 millimeter and they are going to go off of this hole right here and this hole right here so we're going to loctite these slide them into place so we got them loctited now we're just going to slide them not tighten them yet we want to get them close just don't tighten them all the way down now we're going to move some wires out of the way and to tension this boom we are just going to grab the boom itself we're going to grab the front of the helicopter and we're going to pull it tight and i want to rotate it making sure that the belt isn't caught up on anything and pull it tighter and then come back and torque with all your pressure and tighten these down and then come back and do this one it's going to be hard to judge and feel the belt tensioning but i think with the pulley system torque down give it a feel rotate it it feels good so just give it a good pull check your belt here that feels fine it feels good so now we can move on to final mounting the motor so now we are going to install our motor for the final time so we want our wires to go under this carbon plate and we have our lower two screws for the lower pinion bearing which are going to go through here we're going to have two on each side here and then two on the top so you have a lot of screws holding this motor in place so we're going to slide our wires through and we're going to just finesse it get this to go where we want it to go slide it all into place here we're going to push it down now there's three different size screws so you have a 25 millimeter you have a 16 or 14 millimeter screw and then you have a little eight millimeter screw so the the 14 millimeter and the 25 millimeter screw get these washers these beauty washers and the eight millimeter screw gets a regular flat washer the long 25 millimeter screws go through the bottom here now all these screws i like to put in with no loctite and then come back and remove them one by one and loctite all the screws into place the reasoning we're putting it in with no loctite is because we want to set the gear mesh so get all of your screws put in but get them put in loose so hopefully i can help you guys not make the same mistake that i made so when installing the motor i ran into a problem that the motor was hitting these aluminum rails i screwed this up so pay attention the mark coming down here how it kind of necks down that should be at the bottom so if you look you'll notice that the holes from here to here are thinner than from the top to here so this mount goes on this side and that mount goes on this side and you can also notice that they're not flush with the carbon fiber so that was my mistake so now i'm going to go ahead and fix that so we can get the motor bolted down that is what it should look like the aluminum mount should sit lower than the actual carbon frame side so now get your motor put back in if you'd made the same mistake i did and now let's get all the screws in but again no loctite so now we got that fixed we got the motor back in again no loctite on any of these screws and i left the top two screws out for right now all these screws are loose and our motor can slide forward and backwards now we need to set the gear mesh so i have the motor all the way far as forward as it would go so that way our pinion is not touching the main gear so now in order to set the mesh there's a couple different things you can do i use some regular printer paper and what I like to do is I will slide my motor back until what I think looks pretty good. So you can kind of see right now it's all the way back. It's too tight. So I want to slide the whole motor assembly forward to about right here. I want to grab this gear and rock it. So now I'm going to tighten down all of these screws or at least the bottom two and two on the top. That way it does not move. So now I have those just snugged up for right now. After we get our mesh set, we'll go back, pull each screw one by one and Loctite it. So now I'm going to check again. 
I got a little bit of play. I'm gonna take my piece of paper, it's just standard printer paper, and I'm going to feed it into the gear, which we have to go this way. I have to grab the gear and do it. So you guys can see it. All right, so I'm gonna feed it through, bring it out the other side. So this is what it looks like. You can see there is no tears, and this is telling me that I'm a little too loose. I can go a smidge tighter, which is what I'm going to do. So I went a little tighter on the mesh. I'm gonna grab my next piece of paper and do the exact same thing. I'm going to feed it into the gear mesh and I'm gonna pull it out the other side and it's got a very nice, of course it got crushed here because it went sideways. So let's just do another one real quick. We're gonna take another piece of paper, stay a little bit high with it and we're gonna pull it out the other side. No tears is what we are looking for. If your mesh is too tight, it will tear the paper. So this is a perfect gear mesh. We have just that little bit of rocking play as you can see right through there. So gear mesh is perfect. Now go ahead, pull, tighten all your screws down and then pull one by one and lock tight all of them. Put your top two screws in, tighten all of it down. Now we got all of our screws locked tight and tightened down, got our top two in there, all a two and a half millimeter driver. I'm going to just put the linkages on now. So the way I do my linkages is I like them all to face the same way. So my head linkages are the same way, which you can kind of see. So I wanna do my swash plate linkages the exact same way. So this one I know we have to give a half, just a little half turn, not much of a turn. So there's a couple ways you can pop them on. If you guys don't have these links, ball link pliers, highly recommend it. You can put that one end that has the little notch right there, right into the ball and just pop it right on. It, effortless and it works phenomenal so now i'm gonna adjust this one here till it can get onto the swash plate and do the exact same thing i'm gonna use the back half of my ball link plier pop it into place make sure goose sky is facing out on all your linkages so put the other two in and then we can move on to mounting the esc when getting your back push rod into place, I recommend removing the servo horn off the servo, put the linkage on the servo, and then put it on. It makes your life very, very simple, so much easier. Now for the ESC. Depending on what ESC you're, you are using will depend on how you mount it. I am using a Castle 160 HV. For right now, I'm gonna switch to Hobby Wing later to a 260, I just don't have it yet. So this is the ESC I'm getting. Now, you do get this bag with your mounting hardware, your lock nuts, your screws. It comes with a couple little beauty rings and your bottom clip to go onto here to help hold the, the wires down. Since I'm using this ESC and I'm going to put a receiver pack down here, I am not going to be using this, but you would just put your power wires and your motor wires. But so what I'm going to do is none of these holes will work for me, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to drill my own new holes. So I'm going to come off of the carbon here and I'm going to put my ESC right here power wires back motor wires forward they will go through run underneath and my wires will still come this way but i'm gonna have it just done differently probably with a nice zip tie or something to hold them here now i'm gonna take this, this little felt tip marker i'm gonna put my esc where i want it i'm going off of these two carbon fiber spots right here i could zip tie this down but i don't like zip tying stuff down really so i'm just gonna get it where i have some room i'm going to put a mark here Gonna put a mark here, here, and here. So now I'm gonna pull this back off. I'm going to drill all four of my holes, lock nuts on the bottom, and get the ESC secured. And now the ESC is mounted. Got four screws with lock nuts on the bottom side. Wires are plugged into the motor. So now we can make up our tail push rod. So making up our tail push rod, just like the RS4 Venom and the plug and play, it's the same style tail push rod design. You have an aluminum sleeve that slides over all the way down and you have a pinch bolt, but you are gonna wanna CA this into place. So one thing I would recommend doing is pushing this into place, getting a marker out and getting a dab or a line where this goes so we can put a line right here just like that that way we're going to sand it and you're going to do the exact same to the other side so before we start our sanding we are going to take a two millimeter driver and you're going to take the longer screw here and we are going to add retaining compound to this screw and we are going to get this screwed into place and we really want the retaining compound up here actually we don't want it at the very tip and then we are going to slide it from the inside, get that screw started, and we are gonna screw it all the way down 
until it stops and then we are going to torque it down very tight set it aside for a few minutes while we're sanding so that way it gives has time for the retaining compound to start to set up because you don't want this screw to come loose so once you're at the bottom just give it a good twist now do the exact same to the other one sand your push rod both ends and then we can glue them into place so we are ready to glue now. Now, normally I do not like using CA to glue my push rod ends on. I use epoxy, but since this is a pinch clamp style and you're not only relying on the glue, but you have a clamp there, I'm okay with that. I have sanded the carbon. You can see it is roughed up. Going to test fit my end and it fits on there nicely. It is a hollow tube, not a solid carbon like the manual states. So I'm going to flip this around here just so it's easier for me to do. I'm going to take a little bit of this Starbond CA. I really like this glue. You can use the stuff that it came with in the kit. Just gonna put a little bit of a dab around it, run it around, and then I'm going to take my push rod end and I'm gonna spin it as I work it down. Spin it, spin it, and then push it down into place. Then I'm gonna come back with my two millimeter driver, retaining compound on the screw, and I am going to completely tighten it down while the glue is curing. You can see it pushed the glue out. I'm gonna come back with a rubbing alcohol on paper towel, wipe off any excess glue that I can just to clean this joint up just to make it look better. And then you're gonna do the exact same on the other end. And when you do them, make sure that you are gluing the same way, meaning this one is facing up your pinch bolt, so get the other one to face up. And that's really just for a preference and to make it look a lot cleaner when you are done. Once you have both of your ends glued into place, let that dry for a couple minutes and then put your push rod ends on and just screw them all the way down, probably about halfway, and then we can adjust it on the model. So now that we are done with that, we got our linkages on both ends here. And the other reason why I like to use epoxy over CA is so you don't get this nasty glue looking joint here epoxy just gives you a so much of a better glue joint but since we are have a clamp style here it is okay so now we are going to get this on the helicopter so now we're going to take our push rod pop it onto the servo again goose guy facing out so we're just going to take that get it popped into place once we have the one on the servo i would recommend loosening up your push rod clamps just so you can get them in there and then same on the back one and just snug them back up, but don't tighten them all the way down yet until we get the push rod adjusted. So now we're gonna to come to the back and we are going to adjust our push rod until we have a little bit about four degrees of positive or right rudder. Now you can look at these little tabs right here and you can eyeball them straight down and if they line up, that is zero pitch. So we want couple degrees of positive pitch we're going to take a look at that we're going to see how that looks we want just a little bit more so we are going to adjust our linkage again as the goose guy facing out that looks pretty good we're going to take our ball link pliers and we are going to pop our linkages on now now it is on we're going to test range motion we are good to go now we are going to take our clamps and retighten them back down and our tail push rod is completed. Now looking down your push rod, try to make sure it is as straight as possible and it is in the middle of the push rod guides all the way down so we can wiggle this, we know it is free. So now we are ready to move on. I'm gonna have to end part two off here. This video is getting long, we got a lot done. In part three, we will finish this thing up and get it ready to fly. All that is left now is wiring. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've learned a lot throughout this build. I hope you have too. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And remember, Patreon and PayPal are linked in every video description if you'd like to help support me. Take care and have a great day.